Before we get started, this is your final reminder that I will be at Midwest Gaming Classic April 12th through 14th in Milwaukee. Head to the Midwest Gaming Classic website for more info, and please go, because I would love to meet you. And also remember that I will be at Too Many Games and Portland Retro Gaming Expo this year as well. I might end up adding even more events to my calendar this year, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them all in a pinned tweet on my Twitter profile, so you always know where to go to find the latest info on events I will be attending. I hope to see you somewhere this year. Twitter, Arlo Stuff, at Arlo Stuff. Go there. That's where it's at. Go. Hey, hey. I hate 2D Mario. Okay, no, I don't hate 2D Mario, but I've never been that big of a fan. I guess I just find moving around in 3D to be a lot more stimulating. But Mario Maker excites me. Mario Maker is what suddenly gets me wanting to jump around and stomp turtles in two dimensions. And of course, the recent-ish announcement of Super Mario Maker 2 has got me excited all over again. And you know what? I'm, I'm trying to figure out what I should do with this excitement. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll take some uh, suggestions from the crowd. Anyone? Uh, I, I'm hearing, I'm hearing make a video about it? Yeah, that, that's a good one right there. I will make a video about Super Mario Maker 2. Great idea from this gentleman right over here. Thank you, sir. So let's do it. Let's talk a little bit about why Super Mario Maker 2 has got me all excited and jumbled up in my tum tum, and why I think it's gonna be a pretty darn big deal for the Switch. Beyond my anticipation of, you know, getting and having and playing the game, the most exciting thing about Super Mario Maker 2 is the splash it will make in the world of video games. I've said it before and I'll say it again, things might have turned out very differently for the Wii U if the original Super Mario Maker had been a launch title. I'm not confident enough to say that it would have completely saved the system, but having such exciting new software that finally gave us the ability to do something a lot of us had been dreaming about for decades, all while perfectly perfectly showing off the potential functionality of the gamepad right there on day one? The actual launch of the Wii U was really unremarkable, and early reports of flagging sales pretty much grounded things to a halt. But if instead there had been this great little burst of excitement right at the beginning, who knows where that momentum might have carried the Wii U. It's kind of like your first day at a new school. Do you see a cheerleader trip and drop her lunch and you catch it all on her tray like in Spider-Man? Or do you try to sit down on a toilet when the seat is up and get stuck and they have to close down the school so the fire department can come and get you out. <laughs> Either one of those is definitely going to set a tone, but each will be a very different tone. And what's funny is how even though Mario Maker hit the Wii U when the system was beyond saving, it still had a big impact on YouTube. Countless YouTubers and streamers were making and playing levels and lots of people were tuning in. It was kind of a big thing. The game itself was a huge deal. But unfortunately, people still just didn't want to buy a Wii U to play it, so they instead enjoyed the game by watching other people enjoy it. So now that we're getting a sequel on the Switch, I find myself pondering muchly about the potential that it has. Now we're looking at a system that everybody wants, one that's selling like mad. Now when the internet goes nuts with the game, people are going to want to get in on the action. People are going to want to be playing these levels that they are seeing on their YouTube screens. In this way, it's got the potential to be bigger than it ever was before, which was pretty darn big. But you gotta look at the flip side too. The Mario Maker ice has already kind of been broken in a sense. Nothing will ever beat the novelty of that first time we were given the tools to make our own Mario levels. Some people have already spent hours and hours watching the game on YouTube, and that was years ago now. It is possible that this will tamper interest a fair amount. However, I do think the fact that more people can get in on it now will help offset this. The game is going to be on a fresh, relevant system, and that is going to work wonders. Plus, now Nintendo is allowing anybody and everybody to play their games without content IDing everything the kingdom come. They are openly embracing the internet and its potential impact on their games, probably because they saw how big of a deal Mario Maker was on the internet the first time around. I like to think that Super Mario Maker 2 will be an even bigger deal than the first one was and make a massive splash selling tons and tons of Switch units all by itself. It is hard to predict these things though, so I can't say for sure, but I'm more confident that it will be at least as big a deal as last time. Like it'll at least match the hype. All over the place it's going to be people playing it, let's playing it, streaming it, and watching it. The number of videos in your recommended tab with troll level on them will increase tenfold. And you know what else will probably 
help the hype? The game launches in June. We don't have an exact date as of this recording, but I imagine it'll be right around E3. And in fact, there is a strong rumor going around that it will launch on the 14th, which will be a few days after Nintendo's showcase. The whole community is going to be buzzed on games, and especially if Nintendo announces some fun stuff in their Direct, the launch is going to be big. My personal hope is that it releases a little before E3 so I can be playing it while I sit around watching press conferences all day, but that Friday will be fine too. But now, of course, we come to the game itself. Like I said, I've never been super into 2D Mario, but Mario Maker interests me for a few reasons. I love the creative aspect. I'm extremely not good at making levels, but I love to try. I love to look at all these different pieces and see how they might fit together, what different stuff I might do with them. Then, of course, I love the community aspect, seeing all the amazing, just stupidly amazing stuff that much better designers than I come up with. And playing those levels is a dream, because you never really know what you're gonna find when you boot one up. And there are so, so many levels out there that you'd basically never run out of new ones, even if you tried. And there's always this little thrill being like, maybe I will find the next diamond in the rough. And if I thought people came up with a lot of crazy ideas in the first game, now the potential has increased exponentially. Like I talked about in my initial discussion video, it is just absurd how many new mechanics Super Mario Maker 2 is bringing to the table. The reveal trailer is pretty darn short, but every single individual shot shows off one or more new things. There's so much to unpack in that trailer that Game Explain did an hour and a half long analysis on it. I'm not gonna go over everything here, but I will say that the newly added Super Mario 3D World theme is very fitting. I really enjoyed seeing that. Seeing as 3D World was a 3D game, kinda built like a 2D game, tons of its mechanics translate really really well into Mario Maker. The cat suit is a perfectly fine new power-up to give us, and I really appreciate the added visual style. In the first game, I often found myself wanting 3D sprites, but I wasn't particularly happy with the, in my opinion, very blah new Super Mario Bros. style visuals. But this is a nice change of pace, though I will say it does get me wishing they would add just one tiny little more dimension and give us a 3D Mario Maker with 3D World style. But hey, maybe someday. If I have to pick some favorite new features from the trailer, they are as follows. First, I love the platforms where you can trace out their path. I've always really loved the mechanic in general, so being able to make our own is gonna lead to some crazy challenges. It's just a great way to be able to control the design and flow of a level. And the piranha plants are the same way. You can trace out a path for them, and I only hope that there isn't too much of a limit on how long you can make them. Especially with the platforms. They're not gonna be worth too much if you can't, like, really make them go pretty far across the level. The other feature I'm most excited about is actually another Tracy thing. Apparently, I, I really like Tracy things. It is the clear pipes. This was another mechanic I really liked in 3D World. It's just fun to sloop into one of them and slide around everywhere, changing directions on the fly and trying to end up in the right spot. The possibilities they open up are huge, and I cannot wait to mess around with them. As for my hopes for this game, I don't really have a ton. A lot of new features and mechanics was really what I wanted most, and even if we have seen literally everything, which I suspect that we have not, we are already in for a Mario Maker that's like at least three times better than the first one. But I suppose there are at least two things that I am hoping for. The first is really smooth sharing options. Taking down codes is an absolute chore. I want to be able to seamlessly share levels with my friends. I want to be able to create QR codes that I can then share wherever I want. I want to be able to snap a QR code with my phone through the Nintendo Switch Online app and have the app send the info to my Switch where I can then play all the levels I've saved. We don't have Miiverse anymore, so they're gonna have to give us a lot of options to make sharing on Twitter and such a better experience. Second, I would love the ability to make a gauntlet of levels akin to a world map. I'm doubtful that this will happen because they probably want a level to be a one and done kind of thing, but in my mind, being able to make our own like campaigns in a sense is the next logical step. The next step toward replacing 2D Mario's entirely. So now the question I find myself facing is, how exactly do I want to go about enjoying the game as an official representative of Arlo Stuff Industries LLC, a subsidiary of Arlo Corp? Do I play it on Arlo Plays? Do I play it on my main channel? Do I just put highlights on my main channel? Do I get into streaming? Do I just play viewer levels? How long do I make the videos? How many should I put out? How do I properly capitalize on this upcoming gaming trend? 
I do not know. But whatever happens, I am stoked to get playing and the release cannot come soon enough. As I've said before, that June release date is one of the things I love most about Super Mario Maker 2. The only thing better than Nintendo announcing an exciting new game is Nintendo announcing an exciting new game and releasing it only a few months later. I mean, I feel like they just announced it and we've got like less than three months to wait. June will be here in no time. <gasps> oh my gosh, June will be here in no time, which means that E3 will also be here in no time. Ah, where's my waiting chair? I need my chair! Well, before you click away from this video, I need one or more of these things from you. How excited you are, features you want to see, what kind of Mario Maker content you want from me, and your favorite recipe for homemade mayonnaise. I myself prefer using apple cider vinegar and avocado oil, but to each their own.